It is another morning talk. <clears throat> I haven't talked yet this morning. <clears throat> Let's try that again. It's another morning talk. Hello. I thought I would get ready again this morning and share with you guys, because I'm getting real uh, with y'all, I thought, let me get real and while I get ready. So, <laughs> um, I wanted to share some of the things uh, that, because I have gotten this question a lot, about how I've been able to shut down my business somewhat, not completely, um, while I made this big transition and big move. And so I wanted to let you guys know that there's gonna be some content coming up, sharing some of the ways that I have made that happen in some of the different areas where money, I mean, they call it passive income, but there's always front loading, there's always a little work, there's always, you know, it's hard to find something that's truly just 100% passive. So I was going to be sharing some of these things in upcoming videos, and I wanted to give you a heads up about that. Anyway, so uh, if you <laughs> if you are new here, welcome. I am Margaret, Texas Cal Treasures, and I have recently moved from Texas to Colorado. And what else do I need to tell you? Yeah, I stay home. I'm a single mom. I homeschool my kids. I am self-employed and all of the things, all in one. How do I do it? I don't know. <laughs> Ask me in 10 years when they're all grown up. It's coming up. Is that glare gonna bother me? Is it gonna bother you? I'm close up right, but I digress. Okay, always. Okay, so moved here from Texas. Been in Colorado maybe two months now. We moved in mid-June, so we're now in mid-August. So it's been two months. Still getting the lay of the land and unpacking and getting business restarted. So this, I can't say this week, but coming up, I am going to be sharing some print-on-demand stuff and how easy it is. So if you're like, uh, I'm out, I can't do that, Deep breath. Yes, you can. <laughs> you, one, it's a mindset. Like you've got to tell yourself, I can do this, right? That's, I mean, just with anything, whether or not you end up liking it or not, don't tell yourself, oh, I can't do that, right? It is a mindset. So if there's, I mean, nobody popped out of the womb being a brain surgeon or anything else on this planet. So <laughs> if you can, operate a computer, you can do print on demand. Believe me, because whenever I got started with print on demand, I went into it kicking and screaming because let's see, who was it? Glenn Zubia, Yong, and Joe Clay were all like talking to me over and over. And they just kept talking to me about starting print on demand. And I was like, no, nope, no, nope, I'm a reseller. No, 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 no. But it's one of those things that just it keeps emerging in your life and it's like okay I need to pay attention to this and I am not artistic I am not a graphic designer all of these things but I was able to figure out how to make it work and honestly like most of the designs most of the shirts that sell from what I understand nowadays are text-based so you don't even have to put a picture in your shirt um, so I am going to be showing you how to create a print-on-demand shop on Etsy. So I'm gonna do a whole video just how to set up an Etsy store, because if you already have one, great. But if you wanna have a separate one for just your print-on-demand stuff, I'm gonna do a start to finish setup on Etsy, super quick and easy. And then I'm going to do a video using Printify, which is, I never used it before. And they reached out to me and were like, hey, you wanna check out our, uh, our site? I was like, yeah, okay. Oh my gosh, because I've always used another, I, I've used Printful, I've used, you know, the standalone ones that like Printful will integrate with Etsy and some of these other, you know, like if you have your own website, Shop, Shopify, no, what is it? What's the one you can put on your own website? I don't know, maybe it is Shopify. And like Redbubble, places that are like standalone print-on-demand places. But I'd never tried Printify because I was like, whoa, my plate's full. So anyway, they reached out to me and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take a look at it. And when I was, I was like, you know, just exploring their site. By the time I was like an hour in, I had already created like 30 products 
and had them like posted on my Etsy. It was so fast. And that's an hour of me just like also learning the site. It was like so, so seamless. Um, <clears throat> so that being said, I'm gonna be making a video about integrating that, using Printify, and like how to make just super simple print on demand stuff. Because also I will say, um, merch by Amazon, which is on Amazon's platform, is definitely the one that makes me the most money. But from what I understand now getting on, they wanna see that you kind of already have the, you know, the ropes. Um, and so they want you to link some of your print on demand stuff. So if you've already got a an Etsy shop set up, you know, you can provide that and say, look, I already have this set up, cool. right? Let me in. And then you can print, you know, post the same exact designs on Amazon. So it's not even, cause Amazon gets such, I'm, I'm crazy traffic. Ask me how I know. I shop there all the time. Hopefully you're not out because you're like, no, print on demand. But I'm telling you, if you want to know like how I really was able to do a lot of this stuff and move and do a lot of the stuff that I do with my kids where I have such freedom, that's one of the big things is I, you know, have a YouTube channel, which I tell everybody to do, create a YouTube channel and print on demand stuff. Cause that's stuff like if I, before I started homeschooling and this was a big part of it too, before I started homeschooling. So if you don't have kids at home or your kids are older or your kids go to school, when my kids were still in public school, and my youngest was actually in like preschool, but only went two days a week at this point. I spent hours, hours. Like I'm not the kind of person that could just sit and like watch TV or whatever. Um, so if I had the TV on, my laptop was in my lap and I was working on uploading shirt designs. I mean, and I, I can't tell you how many I did every single day. So I would say, you know, that front loading really helped a lot. Like when I had the energy and the time and the, you know, the time to do it, then I just did, I mean, like I never just sat and watched TV. I, I mean, still, it's like super rare. I don't ever just. I don't know. I just don't. I have things to do, people to see, places to be, and I don't know. Anyway, so that's one of the things. Um, creating a YouTube channel, that's another thing, which I probably, you know, maybe I could do another video on that because I have, you know, my sister and I have started our podcast, and we've got like 168 subscribers. Woohoo! Right? So it feels good to um, take it back to the beginning, right? <clears throat> because when you start getting, you forget that learning mind, right? If you know what I'm talking about, where when you are just starting something and that excitement and that like every single view, every single subscriber is like super exciting. I remember when I first started um, doing YouTube and I was so excited when I, when I hit the point when I had 60 views in an hour and I was like, that means I got one view a minute. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting, right? And I was so, in, I'm like genuinely enthusiastic. Do you know how many YouTube channels I have started and like abandoned? So many, and it's okay, right? It's one of those things that, that failure, we were talking about this on the podcast the other day. With success, like with every success, there's so many failures, right? So it's like a failure is not a failure. A failure is a step forward. You know, you've learned, you fail, you learn, you grow. You do something else, you fail, you learn, you grow until like things start clicking or things work and things, um, where was I? Oh yeah, beginner's mindset and failures and learning. And don't be afraid. My sister's first video, her face isn't in it, you know? And that's what I'm hoping, you know, when we have this, we have this podcast we started, we're three episodes deep. We've got four, the fourth one in the can and we were recording the next one today. Um, It's just to try, you know? And, and if you don't wanna put your video, your face in the video, you don't have to. Lots and lots of successful channels don't have a person's face in it. I have to finally get ready because we have things to do today. I'm going to be sharing print on demand stuff and also just the, the setup for Etsy if you decide you want to sell other things. Etsy is not just for vintage stuff. You can sell print on demand, digital downloads, supplies, what else? Handmade stuff, you know, I think that's what a lot of people think. Oh, it's just for handmade stuff. No, no, it's not. It's for all the things except for 
contemporary stuff. I, I realized why I'm having such a hard time gathering my thoughts this morning. I did not sleep well. I went to bed around midnight and I woke up about 5 a.m. So that's not good. But I had a bad dream and it woke me up and I couldn't get back to sleep. And I tried for about an hour. So I laid in bed for until about six. And then I gave up and I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to get up anyway, about an hour. And so I decided I would get up and enjoy my time. Kids are still sleeping. We're trying to get, I'm trying to get them back on a, a normal schedule because we're starting, you know, our school year. I'm very excited about all the things we're gonna get to learn here in Colorado. I am thinking, I'm thinking, I'm planning a, our first, cause I like to do a lot of uh, road schooling, which means we do studies and we kind of do, you know, like front loading, learning about stuff. And then we go visit, but we don't just like go visit. We, you know, I try to create uh, an experience or have them create. I always use this as an example because this was like, it worked out the best and it was so good. Um, we created a book, uh, each one of us. We were learning about the Spanish missions in San Antonio, in that area, in that region, in San Antonio area. Um, and the Alamo is one of the missions, but there's a whole mission trail there. And so <clears throat> we created this almost like a scrapbook. Uh, but you know, we, we wrote down like the name of the mission and we printed off a picture of it and like on the map where it was. And then we left like a bunch of empty pages. And then we researched each one, like the history behind it and how it had to do with the indigenous people in the area, how the Spanish mission missionaries like roped the native, you know, indigenous people in to the missions and convince them to come and how they were treated and blah, 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 like all the things. And then we, you know, also the architecture of the buildings, cause some of them have very cool and unique architecture. Yeah, and like there's an aqueduct, like real by, real close by one of them. So we included that too. It's a really super old aqueduct. And and so we, we went, we created this book that we ended up, you know, we left plenty of empty space too, so that when we were there, we were looking for features that are not necessarily very well um, well known or, you know, some of the architectural features or like there was a field at one of them where it was like the indigenous people were forced to, to basically farm and labor. So it was like different things like that. And then we had to go like take pictures of those things and get our impressions of them and and they have a mariachi mass. So we sat in, we just like ended up being on the, there on that particular day and it worked out. So we got pictures of the, the mariachi one. So that was cool. Anyway, <laughs> but it was so memorable. It made it like so more than just like, oh, we went and saw it, right? So they knew a lot of the history behind the stuff and tried to give not just like textbook history, but let's look at it from both sides, like really. Cause you know how that is. The, the victor is the one that gets to write the history books usually. So that being said, I decided that our first one here would have to do with the Pueblo Indians. I call them Pueblo Indians, indigenous peoples. And then go to the cliff dwellings at Mesa Verde and there are some other ones that I've gotten some recommendations on. But then, because we're really close to Colorado Springs, this is too, like, where I think we're gonna start. And I know you're gonna be like, don't, okay. You know what, maybe you're not, maybe you are. Who knows, I gotta quit doing that. Because I don't like, maybe I shouldn't put it out there. We're gonna start with Manitou Springs. So in Manitou Springs, there are the Manitou Cliff Dwellings. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting because we can go, it's about an hour away from us and get like a little taste before we go to Mesa Verde, which is gonna be more of a road trip. And so I was doing some research to get the kids started, you know, where to kind of have them jump off. And it turns out that the Mesa Verde cliff dwellings are not natural to this area, that they were actually, they were cliff dwellings in a different area 
but around the turn of the century, they were dismantled and moved over here, kind of like, there's a few different stories. Some of them say to protect the heritage and blah, blah, blah from people like looting or whatever. Um, but yeah. And then other stories are like, no, it was like a for a tourist trap. They wanted to have it over, you know, near this area to bring more tourists in. So, um, <clears throat> but then they didn't like construct it, you know, historic. It, 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 and I know it's like the times, right? But I, this is such a good discussion to talk about how things culturally have been, you know, where it was acceptable back then. And I don't think it was right, but you know, in the culture, just because of what, how things were prevalently, it was something that was like, some people didn't bat it. I'm sure people batted an eye, but now it's, you know, people are being more culturally sensitive and this is what I was going to say a minute ago. I don't like when people are like, oh, quit being so woke. No, I don't think it's that. I think it's just being sensitive to other people's feelings and cultures. And I feel like it's a little hypocritical when people say stuff like that. And if you are one of those people, hear me out. My reason being is it's like so easy to say other people are being woke when it's something that doesn't affect you or, or is not something that's special to you. But take your God, your religion, your culture, your heritage, and then have somebody else make fun of it or degrade it or something like that. And it would be disrespectful. So why is it disrespectful for them to do it to you? But when you or other people do it to them and they don't like it, it's suddenly woke. So... And I'm not left, right, so I mean, I'm just like, just people be nice, okay? That's all I care about. I'm like, I actually had this conversation the other day with somebody, because I was talking about where I was buying, you know, like, because we're, where we're renting and where I was looking at buying. And I was like, yeah, we'll probably look around in the same area. And she was like, oh, I would never live, <laughs> I would never live in like that county. It is red. And I would never want to live in a red county, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? I said, I don't, I don't feel that way. You know, I don't feel that way. I said, I take people on a person by person basis, you know, and it's like this country, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> this country has gotten so, not just the country, the whole world has gotten so divided. So us versus them. And it's like, we're people, you know, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not for hurting or pushing down other people's rights. I think everybody should have their rights. But I think there needs to be a dialogue because once you get to that point where everybody is like, oh, I won't even live in the same county as anybody like that. It's like, it, how will this ever get fixed? You know, if you never, if you are never around those people so they can see, oh, you know what? I've got a friend who's, you know, whatever, and not like me. And, oh, they're not a monster. I actually like them. She makes good brownies, you know? And, you know, then you can start having a dialogue and you can start humanizing people. I think that's a lot of it is like people have gotten to where they're demonizing the others, you know, when it's like, no, we're all like just people and we all want to be happy and we all want to be respected and have our views at least heard. I know there are people that want to like force their views onto others, but that's the same. I mean, it goes both ways, right? People on the one side want this side to, oh, come on people. I don't know the solution for, but I know the solution is not more separation. It's caused more strife and more us versus them. I'm like Dr. Seuss's butter battles and the Starbelly sneeches. Have we not learned our lessons? We need to go back to kindergarten and read some Dr. Seuss. I think it's important that, that the kids are at least educated about, about, you know, because I do really, I want to go to Mount Rushmore. And that's a whole nother thing. You know, I think it's important to see what is and the coolness and the history behind it, but also to look at it from the other point of view of like, okay, there was this really cool mountain. <laughs> and suddenly it's like, you know what? Instead of putting up a statue, let's just carve this mountain up. I think it's just important because I don't want 
I don't want, I think that's it. It's like, I don't want my kids to grow up having like this bias of, oh, you know, like that demonizing, well, how could they carve this mountain? Or how could they move those? Like, okay, yeah, they did this. And that's definitely not something we would do. And definitely it's da 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 da. You know, but let's also look at the historical, like what was happening. And then this, like all of the, the aspects of it, because it's just like, I think, yeah, I, I definitely feel like it's just, there's too much us versus them. And I think a lot of that is coming to a head. I think a lot of that people are just getting, it's exhausting to keep up with. It's exhausting to try to keep your family, friends, whatever, happy, you know, because I've, I've definitely lost friends that I didn't disagree with them. Like I agreed with some of the things they were saying, but when they got to the point where they were like, how can you still talk to that person and try to make me demonize that person or make me like, you have to like be over here with me or you're with them, you know? And it sort of turned into that. And a number of friends I, I definitely had to step away from because it turned into attacking me because I didn't, I mean, I agreed with their, you know, viewpoint, but I didn't agree with shunning another person because of how they felt or how they were. I mean, eh, yeah, okay. If you, there's somebody like hurting somebody else or like wanting to take somebody's rights away or like, but like, I think just hearing people out, I think a lot of it, like I said, separation is never going to be the answer. Cause even if there is a person that wants say to take away another person's rights in some way, whatever that may be, gun rights or abortion rights or whatever, you know, these either side pick, right? Religious rights, anything. The answer is never going to be demonize them, isolate them, because what's that going to cause? If you demonize somebody, isolate them, that's just going to cause more strife, more extremism, more like, oh, okay, well, you shun me. Well, I'm going to show you. I don't know how we got on this. Well, I do know how we got on this topic, but and that's something else, you know, my sister and I've talked about a lot with creating the podcast and trying to live more authentically and work more authentically and present more authentically and share more authentically and coming from the soul. That's all I can do now. I can't do anything else. There's no going back to just, just the facts, ma'am. Give me that and nothing else. So, <laughs> be on the lookout for these videos. I'm looking forward to that. Like creating, uh, I started recording the Etsy. Well, I recorded it last night and I had to do a voiceover now to set up the Etsy account for you, for your print on demand stuff. And then I'm gonna record the one for Printify to show you how to do that, cause it's so easy. And let me know, cause some of the stuff I did, I created on this AI image creator. And it was really fun to play with. So I could show you that too. I could show you Canva because Canva is super easy to create on as well. I don't know. I have all the things. Like I do so many <laughs> different things that I'm like, oh, I should show them this. Oh, I should show them that. Oh, I should show them this. Uh, so yeah, I just have to pace myself. I hope you guys have a really good day. I would love to know your thoughts and speak from the heart. I would ask, you know, if you're going to comment one way or the other, whether you agree or disagree with me, I want to hear what you have to say. But if it's like hate filled, then like, I'm not going to like give it any attention and let it in, you know? So it's, but if you have a point of view where it's like from the heart, I think that's the way we're going to have to go forward, you know, go with people and trying to mend what's happening in our, in our society, in our world. It's just opening up to hearing, first of all, and trying to communicate from the soul. Because that's, you know, but if you're like, it's really hard to hear somebody when they're coming in from a point of, of hate and division. I send you much love. I send you much, much love and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye you guys.